and it's ridiculously disempowering. Do a quick search on synonyms for disempower and you'll feel shivers down your back. Emasculate, destabilize, undermine, debilitate, cripple, sabotage. No one ever deserves to be treated like that. No one ever deserves to feel that way. Listening to Your Money, Your Business, the podcast with me, Debbie Colburn. I'm a small business expert and a former professional accountant turned money mindset guide. And I am obsessed with helping you achieve all those things you've dreamed of and thought were out of your reach with helping you figure this money stuff out. My goal on this podcast is to help you break the cycle of feast or famine with your cash flow and to help you grow your wealth and sustain it over the long term. We dive deep, we get real, and we get raw, discovering and exploring what is really possible for you and letting go of all those things that are holding you back. If you've ever thought it's not enough, looking at your bank balance, or think, I'll never get that paid off. When you open up the credit card statement, maybe you're sick and tired of constantly being worried of just getting by, and you know you're missing out on key opportunities again and again. Or maybe you're done with the constant arguments over money. Then this is absolutely the right place. We'll bring you a whole new way to look at money, profit, cash, wealth, tackle the challenges, share the ideas, the tips and the tactics and the strategies, and get you connected to the right resources. Think of this as your weekly prescription of money mastery development and leave the hard work up to me. No matter what's going on in your life right now, I've got your back. Ready? Buckle up. Take a deep breath and join me in a conversation about breakthrough to the next level. Welcome, my amazing peeps. I'm so glad to have you back here with me. As kids, we've likely all pointed the finger at someone else for something that we did. Yet, as we grow older, that self-serving deflection is no longer the funny game it used to be. In this episode, I chose to focus on the blame game because of what I'm seeing and hearing all around me, in the media, on the socials, even in person. And that cloak of powerlessness it evokes is the thing that is making life hard. And it doesn't have to be that way. I'm a big believer in accountability and ownership, both to yourself and to others. Like many of you, I've not always held myself accountable. It's kind of one of the byproducts of my human design with core values of variety and uncertainty at the top of the list, a maverick archetype. And well, there's a reason my podcast originally debuted with the word unshackled. It's been one of my biggest hurdles, how to blend and curate a life and a business that celebrates the unique me is easy and hits all the metrics and the goals. And maybe you, you can relate. Accountability has not been easy for me. Blame is the evil big brother to accountability. The Loki to Thor for my Marvel Universe lovers, the Cruella to Ella for my Disney aficionados, Harry Potter to Voldemort for my, well, the Harry Potter fans. Let's talk about ownership first. What is it exactly and why does it matter? I own my car. Maybe you own your own car. You own your car, and yet you can't just, like, throw your hands up and go, done, and just drive it without a care. You are still responsible to maintain it, service it regularly, make your car payments on time, if you have it financed or leased, and yes, even if you are independently wealthy, let's call it that term, you're a multimillionaire, you're maybe a billionaire, although... If you're a billionaire listening to this podcast, woohoo, DM me. Uh, Even if you are, you are still accountable to all the people who do those things for you. That stuff, the things you need to ensure that you can continue to have the car 
and that it's reliable, that it's safe and it retains as much value as possible, that thing is accountability. And to all the people who made it possible for you to own and enjoy your car. Ownership means that you're responsible for all aspects of the car when what happens with it, in it, and around it. So enough about cars. Ownership matters because it gives you a level of autonomy to act in a variety of different ways as long as you can get to your goal with them. Ownership of your job responsibilities or your contract commitments or the delivery of services in your business. Like this podcast, I am accountable to you, my listeners, to deliver it pretty much every Tuesday each week or at least tell you why it won't be there. Others are depending on you to deliver those things. You are accountable to the things you say you will do, to your commitments, and to the people who are relying on them. The moment that you don't take ownership, you have crossed an invisible line into the universe of blame. It's not my fault. I didn't have the time. Someone gave me the wrong thing. They gave me the wrong directions. They misspelled a word. I'm in this situation because of someone or someone else. Anything but me. Just put your hands out straight out in front of you, palms up facing the wall, and big circle. Not my fault. Blame is insidious. It's sneaky. It's sickeningly, sickeningly addictive. And it loves company. Blame is the ultimate gossip magnet. Blame is the most powerful culture bomb. It can blow up a culture in an office, in a business, in a friendship group, in a heartbeat. And blame is a relationship killer. And it's ridiculously disempowering. Do a quick search on synonyms for disempower and you'll feel shivers down your back. Emasculate, destabilize, undermine, debilitate, cripple, poke holes in, sabotage, obstruct, impede, clip one's wings. No one ever deserves to be treated like that. No one ever deserves to feel that way. Ever. No one ever deserves that. Yet every day, without a fleeting thought, people are choosing not to be accountable for their actions, their words, and not own up. When you make the choice to use blame as a strategy, you are hiding. You are choosing not to grow and understand what's really behind your unwillingness to be vulnerable. Oh my God, not the vulnerability conversation, Debbie. Please don't go, Brene Brown. No, we don't need that. When you're using blame as a strategy, you're choosing to not learn a better approach. So let's pop back to accountability for a second. When you blame your failure to deliver on someone else, you are also failing them. Accountability is a two-way street. It's as busy as Broadway Street in New York City, Oxford Street in London, the 401 in Toronto, or Sydney's George Street. A person is both accountable to others, to the commitment they made, and the other party must respond If they fail to do that. Guys, I really don't like using the word failure. It's a harsh and unforgiving word. But I'm using it in this case to demonstrate the severity of not owning your stuff. So back to blame. Blame is easy. Effortless. Used as easily as the little white lies we all tell. Yep. Studies have shown that at least 75% of people lie one to two times a day. I am pretty sure it's likely a lot higher in reality if people were really honest with themselves. When you step into blame, there is a part of you that understands that you let things get out of control. And that's uncomfortable. Now, I'm not talking the type A control freak. I'm just talking the regular person who feels like their days seem to just vanish. And they can't explain what they accomplished. 
as if there was some private set of rules that said that every minute of every day must be filled with stuff. It must be filled with accomplishment. I'm talking to the person that has that endless to-do list and maybe they wear it as a badge of honor, in honor of being busy. And when they can't tick off something on that to-do list, it's someone else's fault. To those of you who overschedule continuously, you're, you're missing deadlines again and again. And to the person who spends without any consideration of their intentional money plan. You guys remember the one we did in week one of our four-week course, Radically Boost Your Money IQ? And if you haven't been there, make sure you do hop on. And do, it's totally free. So just a little, just I just want to mention that. So this type of person, I'm talking to the type of person that says, I don't know where my money goes. And by blaming someone else, part of your brain believes that it has now gotten back some of that lost control. I know. Holy crap. I do that? One of the more sinister side effects of blame is in the same vein as vulnerability, it weirdly allows you to not have to address any of those uncomfortable, uncomfortable, painful, maybe likely highly emotional buttons, your triggers. It allows you to avoid the tough conversations because wow, now you've given that shit to someone else to stew over and just let them wonder why does this always happen to me? Why do I always get blamed? Just let them take on their own victimness. That is so not fair of you. Hard to hear? It's easy to brush off stuff onto other people, but I know deep down all of you are bothered by that. You recognize that it's hurting someone else, and that's empathy. And hurting someone else unintentionally never feels good. When you're honest with yourself, even if you can't find the, the words for it or you can't voice those words, there is a nagging feeling, a second guessing inside, a replaying of the incident in your head. And I mentioned I was seeing and hearing it all around me. And as someone who is truly positive and a future thinker, my feeds are pretty highly curated. Yet, I'm not totally disconnected from the real world. CNN and Google search, I still do those daily. I just don't believe them all. I see both sides. And I hope, like me, you recognize that it's okay to unfollow someone or something. Change your opinion about something or someone as you learn and grow. Or just because it's no longer a good fit for the season you are in your life. So as an example, a few years ago, I started following, following Ray Dalio after reading Tony Robbins' book, Master the Game. Money, Master the Game. If you aren't familiar with Ray Dalio, he's the former CEO of Bridgewater. The, um, he, he, the, they were the world's biggest hedge fund. He's a billionaire investor. Just Google him. And I learned and I enjoyed much of his stuff. I actually had it on my, you know, I'd like to meet him one, one day. Then, this past week, the host of a podcast he was a guest on posted this. The collapse has become, Ray Dalio explains, why America is headed for a horrific financial crisis. And on another podcast, one that is at the other end of the scale, same interview, same book he's promoting, same can't talk, totally dis different message in the headline. Most people will lose everything in caps. How to survive and thrive in caps in the upcoming financial crisis. Bracket, prepare now in caps. And then there's Robert Kiyosaki out there on podcasts. Don't buy anything for 18 months. What's coming is worse than a recession. Like, holy crap, guys. Understand their headlines. They're clickbait. But reading this type of thing is heartbreaking. It's demoralizing. 
It drives daggers into the hearts of really good people. And here's what I want to share on the above headlines and those who choose to share them. I don't follow the first person's podcast. The Google search algorithm popped that up. I understand how it works, how to make the algorithms work for me, and why something might end up in my feed. I googled Ray, Ga Ray Dalio. That popped up. I know what triggered it. The average person likely doesn't. And so they're bombarded with doom and gloom, believing it's the only possible scenario. They freak out. They panic. You've seen it. Maybe you're doing it. Maybe someone in your family's doing it. Maybe when someone in your business or around you in work is doing it. And yup, blaming. Blaming everyone because you, you can. Because remember early on the reason why people blame? When you step into blame, there is a part of you that understands that you let things get out of control and that's uncomfortable. It weirdly allows you to not have to address any of those uncomfortable, painful, and maybe emotional buttons, your triggers. It's hard to think clearly in the headspace that, that the top headline and the stuff that Robert Kiyosaki puts out because it puts you automatically in panic mode and keeps you there in survival mode when you feel like your debt and your financial situation is suffocating you. Now I've read a few of Robert Kiyosaki's books. I've learned some good insights, way prefer his wife Kim Kiyosaki's approach, but I don't follow him either. What can you say about someone who has built his empire based on making people feel paranoid about money? And the one in the middle? The second one? This is someone who I have followed for a number of years and who, in my opinion, has learned to balance honesty and reality with always striving for your dreams and your future uplifting always. Read that title again. Most people will lose everything. The lose everything is in caps. How to survive and thrive. Survive and thrive is in caps in the upcoming financial crisis. In brackets, prepare now in caps. He is not fear mongering like the others are. It's an honest statement based on what he knows people will do, based on what they're reading, absorbing from human nature. And yet in that, he is empowering, yet empowering his audience to grow, to thrive, to see possibility, no matter what the circumstances. Yes, it's Tom Bilyeu of Impact Theory. As I end this episode, I'd encourage you to curate your feeds a bit more. Find people who inspire you, that have that unique skill of understanding what is and not being consumed by it. To find people who can help you build, shore up your financial foundations in your personal life, for your family, and in your business, so that you can weather and thrive in all scenarios. History is cyclical. It repeats itself. I'm 67 and in my 20s with a new baby in the early 80s and today I'm seeing a financial world that resembles that one. Our first home mortgage was $18,000 at a rate of 14%. My first new car was 16% from a top Canadian bank. We made it. No blame. You can too. Let's make the most amazing 2023 together. Challenges, big bumps, and yeah, wild wins. So this podcast got you thinking you'd like to go a bit deeper on this with me. You want to figure your money thing out? I have got so much more to share with you and to give you. And you're really ready to toss the shroud of money worries into the trash forever. To stand taller and more confidently in every decision and manifest the most profitable and successful year of your life, which means worry-free abundance in life and in business and so much more. 
make sure you to sign up for my free four-week course where we're taking a deeper dive into how to transform that money situation in your bank accounts that's keeping you up at night. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All you have to do is just pop over to the link bit.ly bit dot ly forward slash boost dash money dash eq and invite a friend to go through with you even family or maybe co-workers or employees it's a great way to get a money conversation going and the more people in your community who are shaking up the scarcity mindset the more our families and our communities will thrive don't be shy or embarrassed. Pass the link on with to as many people as you can because stats show that we never know what's happening in people's lives, especially when it comes to money. I cannot wait to see you inside. And yep, regardless if you sign up for TBN or not, this course is absolutely free. No strings attached. So much value handpicked for you inside it. You're for sure going to experience a transformation in a very short time. Come on, join us and have some fun. bit.ly B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash boost dash money dash E-Q. Super excited and I will see you there.